Hey guys, Shane here. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at painting up some World War II drum and foster maker and focusing particularly into their jump smocks. And for this, we're going to be using AK Interactive's Splinter Monster paint set, which is for doing the uh, splinter saw camouflage found on German smocks. Also, you probably use this color too on stealth bombs, which is their quarter tent roll. So this set is a six color set. I've already placed our Falchion Troop in here, which is from the Dragon Gen 2 set of the Chats Clean the Mortar, and I picked the most suitable figure for a tutorial. Also, I've mounted his uh, jump helmet on a separate piece uh, for ease of painting. Now, normally, if any of you have been watching my tutorials before, I have the face pre painted. This time, we're actually going to paint the face once we're done uh, painting the jump spot. There's different ways of doing it. And as always, I've already done a video dealing on how I paint faces, so a link shall pop up on your top right -hand corner right now. So before we get started, I've already prepared the model and it's been given several coats of Vallejo Surface Primer Grey. This has been worked up about two or three very thin coats, allowed it to dry overnight, and then I've mounted his foot to a paper clip with some super glue, and I have pushed that down into an old wine cork and this gives us a very solid handle. So we're going to be using a mixture of a paintbrush and airbrush for this. So we're going to begin by applying our base coat to the camouflage pattern, which is going to be several very thin coats applied with the airbrush of Flinter Monster base. And for this, we're going to be using some Vallejo airbrush thinner that works very well with AK paints. So always ensure that you just give these paints a good shake and ensure that the pigments mix and I'm simply just going to pour a few drops in. Now for best results with this type of paint, do thin it pretty well. So hopefully you guys can see. So I'm gonna put a couple of drops in, and I'm looking for a milky consistency. So about four drops of thinner. I'm gonna mix it up with an old brush here. Make sure the brush is clean. The consistency is very much of milk. And if you're unsure, you can always do a couple of test sprays on a piece of paper or a piece of plastic art. Now the trick with AK paints, is you really need to apply them in very thin, not building up the paint too intensely. As we start applying this with the airbrush, I have about 20 PSI, and I'm only going to start applying small amounts of paint at a time. It's a very, very uh, flat color. But something I quite like about AK paints is they go down very matte and it's very subtle but rich uh, pigment. So I'm going to allow this to dry ever so slightly and I'm going to apply two more coats in exactly the same manner. Again, keeping the piece moving and not allowing my paint to build up too much on any one area. Okay, our base color has been allowed to dry and now we're going to start blocking in some of the other main colors. So now I'm going to start painting in these trousers. I'm going to use some Vallejo Field Grey. And I've pinned this paint ever so slightly, just with a little bit of water. And I'm just working this on with a number four brush. And I'm just going to be careful not to get on any area I don't want it, especially up on the smock areas. And this paint's a little bit thick, so I'm going to mix a little bit more water into my mix. And I'm just going to work this in to the smock. And bear in mind, the trousers go up inside the smock, so make sure you paint up under the smock as well, so you don't have uh, any of the beige showing through. So I'm going to base coat his jump helmet again with field grey. His trousers is blocked in, and I'm going to start doing the same for his boot. And we're going to just apply a base colour of German grey. Again, from Vallejo model, uh, model color range. And again, I thin this again with a little bit of water just to improve how it flows and that we don't obscure any detail. Now we're going to paint his collar or his inner shirt. As his Lufafa, this will be in Lufafa blue. Possible. 
I am being a little bit messy, but we can all do some touch up work to clean all this up. Anyway, it's just important that we get the blue as solid as possible. And so there we have our inner tunic done. So we're going to let that dry and then I'm going to come back in with a fine tip paint brush with the uh, camo base color and just clean up the uh, outer color of the smock where the blue is overlapped. So now we're going to start adding some shadow to our model. So you'll notice firstly that I've left all the wet gear blank. So we're going to come back and paint that in after we've done these camera flash patterns. So for shadow, I always go to my go-to product for adding shadow and that is as always Citadel Agros Earthshade. I want to avoid any pooling of the wash on the model. So take very careful notice of where the wash goes. We don't want it to pool and be intense in one color, like, like here for example. So I'm just going to work it into the model. allowed to dry completely and now we'll start working on the highlight. I'm going to go back to our original colour, our Winter Monster base and I'm going to start working the original colour on all the raised surfaces of the model, leaving the wash in all the recesses. Now bear in mind this is a very thin paint for brush painting so this might require several layers. jump smock given its first highlight coat. This did take several layers, uh, it's one of the reasons why I didn't film the whole thing, but once you take your time, allow each layer to dry for a few minutes, as it is a very thin paint, it will dry quickly. Now we're gonna add a highlight layer to these trousers. Again, we're going back to our field gray, and we're just going to work it back on to the raised details of the trousers and the tops of the creases. boots a very simple highlight of a Vallejo model colour German camo black brown and I'm just going to focus along the tips of these boots. I'm going to start adding our final highlight to the smock before we start adding the camouflage pattern itself. For that we're going to be using AK Splinter Monster light shade, which I'm going to be focusing mostly on the highlighted areas, basically where like the tops of creases fall and whatever.
the part that I'm sure you all have been waiting for quite patiently. And now we start adding in the camouflage pattern. So we're going to be using the last colours from the set, which is the shadow shades, the green spots, brown spots and rain marks. So we're going to begin painting the camouflage pattern. So first things first, you have to kind of decide for yourself what pattern you're going for. In this case, we're going to go for the third pattern camouflage scheme. It's a little bit easier and easier to understand. Uh, there are much more complex, like the pattern A and B types are quite tricky. Now, I've done a little bit of experimenting on one side of the model. You can see I painted some of the brown in. The original brown spots are a little bit too bright from the reference material I'm looking at. So I'm going to use that as a highlight color. And we're going to use a shadow shade to, to block in the brown spots. So I've already began to block in the brown part. The best thing to do is just pick a random area to begin with while having some reference material at hand. So I have my computer displaying some Falchenegger jump patterns just out of shot here to give you something to look at. And the trick is just keep everything jagged. Now this looks like a big dirty blob that doesn't really look like anything remotely similar to a jump pattern smock. But I'm actually going to be putting the green splinters within this as well to help break it up. Again, I'm just going to pick out a little jagged area here. And it's all just kind of this jagged lines. That's really what you're going for. Keep your paint somewhat thin. And keep just referring to your reference material. highlight and for that I've just made up a slightly lighter mix by adding more grey into the colour so if you're using actual Lufafa blue just mix a small bit of like an off-white into it a tiny amount and that this will just help pop it out there we have it it doesn't need to be too intense just a small amount just to draw the eye in there so now we're going to move on to adding our highlights to the brown splinters. The original plan was to use the brown spots supplied in the AK set. However, I found when doing a bit of experimentation off camera that the beige base coat of the smock totally swallowed the uh, brown away to the point where you, just, you couldn't even see it. It was too, too light and it didn't look like any of the reproductions or any of the surviving jump smocks I was viewing online. So I decided to make my own more accurate version of this colour. So we're going to take some Vallejo model colour red leather, some Vallejo model air mahogany and then from the 8k set we're going to take our splinter monster shadow shade and we're going to make very rich burgundy or wine colour which is going to be the highlight for the kind of red brown uh, splinters on his smock. And we're going to mix them all together to form this type of consistency. A quite a deep red brown and this is done mostly just focusing on the mahogany shadow brown and then a small amount of red leather and we're going to take this lighter color and begin to paint it into the, the darker um, base coat that we've already established for the brown splinters and because it's a lighter color we can also create a bit of shading by leaving the original shadow shade in some of the recesses just to make a little bit of interest to our camera flash pattern and I'm going to literally just fill in all these areas that we painted in with the shadow shade and we're just going to work our way up from there. Oh, 
highlights. Now I'm going to start adding the green. Now we're going to be using the green supplied in the AK set. It's, it's pretty accurate to what we need it to be. And then we'll be using a Vallejo Panzer Races German Tanker Crew number one as a highlight. So the trick now with the green is to basically put the green interlocking with the brown spots. So don't have the, the green on its own, it tends to basically coexist with the brown. And again, keeping it in jagged lines and keeping things at right angles. So we'll take, say, this area here, and we will paint in, say, a green area, like so. Again, this is AK paint again, so the pigment is finer. So we're gonna start the building up Our greens again. However, this suits the sense of ground, it gives us more control. It's a little bit hard to see in this for whatever reason, it's just because it's a very subtle colour, but it will begin to build up with sub the subsequent layers. The camera pattern is, it doesn't have too much busyness to it so ensure that you keep quite a bit of the beige showing through green has been blocked in now it looks a bit of a hot mess at the moment because the colour is very dark and dull. So now we're going to add a bit of highlight just to bring out the green ever so slightly and just help define the pattern. And for that we're going to use Vallejo uh, Panzer Races German Tank Crew Number 1 which is this really nice bright green colour. So we're going to start working this in. So with everything highlighted, now we're going to start adding the final step of the camera flash, which are the rain marks. So we're going to be using the rain mark colour from the uh, camo set, and we're going to be applying it using a double zero brush. And I'm going to start painting small vertical lines into the beige areas. And I wouldn't, I would suggest that you don't put too many lines in for the simple fact being is it will get busy and it will begin to draw your viewer's eye all over the place, it'll just overwhelm them. Now you might not be able to see entirely what I'm doing here, but I'm literally just 
painting in very short lines into the beige areas. However, I'm going to leave certain areas, certain of uh, beige patches without it, because you'll find that they are somewhat inconsistent. Like so. So, with the Raymarks out of the way, now we're going to start painting in these white straps. And for that, I'm just going to use some Vallejo German Grey, and we're just going to paint this in uh, to all of his uh, webbing. Y straps and ammo pouches based. Now I'm going to give them a quick highlight just to draw a bit of attention to them and just like how we did with the boots we're going to use some German camo black brown and we're just going to focus on some of the details such as like the the edges of these ammunition pouches and some of the leading um, edges of these Y straps. Leather uh, Y straps and magazine pouches highlighters. Now we're just going to add in the German Eagle to his breast, and this has been done with Vallejo Game Color Ghost Grey. Adding in the metallics, such as his belt buckle, the fairy tiller buckles on his Y strap, and in this case, we'll also do the cup of his canteen um, in metallic as well. And for this, we're going to use oily steel from Vallejo model color. Leather reinforcement tabs on the white straps are going to get painted in using red leather from Vallejo. Canteen cover is going to get a coat of Army Painter Deep Blue, and this is going to be our base for the blue dye that a lot of the Fulcher Major and field, Blue Falcon Field units issued with for their canteens. Pick out the leather strap for the canteen and uh, cup using the same methods we did for all other leather parts, so we'll base it in field grey. Here's the final step for my painting tutorial for painting sprinter uh, camouflage patterns for Falschermaker. The only thing I've done which is, was not covered in this video was I just simply used a, a small amount of pigment on his helmet on his boots to give it a bit of a mud effect. However that will be covered in further videos. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, please comment, rate and subscribe and stay tuned for more painting tutorials. Thanks very much, I'll catch you in the next one and watch out for those buses. Bye bye.